comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're going to look at the latest edition of the Flypad, which is part of the A32 Annex. It has received a major update, but it's currently only available in the developer edition of the uh, add-on. So if you start the Flypad, you will see a lot of changes. For example, you can now see the on and off button, right, to shut down the uh, electronic flight back. Or you can, I say, rearrange the uh, widgets. The weather is on top, then the pins, chats, then the maintenance and the checklist. And that all refers to the things which we see on this side, because that's another new thing. Right now you can simply look at the weather information, but also go to the pin charts. If you pin charts, you can go to the maintenance or you can go to the uh, checklist. And that can be easily done by pressing these buttons. But let's first have a look at the flight, right? Because we can now simply import the information from SimBrief directly into the flight path. It was already, I would say, part of that, but it has, I would say, been optimized a bit because now you can uh, easily see, okay, hey, this is the departure airport, the destination, uh, the company tour, the zero fuel weight can now be seen easily as well as the cost index. And that makes it easier to program the, uh, the FMC, right? Uh, as well as the cruise altitude and the average wind is now being shown here. Uh, on the bottom, you can see the uh, route. So uh, Echo Hotel off a mic, runway 24, and then following certain, uh, say, uh, SID stride stand, instrumental departures, and then probably also on the last piece, we will follow our stand terminal approach route. And then we will land on LFBO, which is uh, in front somewhere on runway number 14, Romeo. So that's the first thing which has changed. And I would say this is already a massive improvement. You can also see that the battery is now draining. That's normal because the battery, I would say, result can run without the battery of the airplane for say nine hours or something. I read it somewhere. You can see it's already on 97%. Uh, besides this, you can switch to the role information and show it like this, right? The role information is the information which you probably know when you're requesting the weather information. This is the format which is being then uh, used, right? And that for some of us is, I would say, unreadable. However, there is a good, I would say, encoder which will encode this weather type. Um, but you can also, I would say, now show it nicely into, I'd say, some nice uh, icons, right? You can see the air pressure, the wind, the temperature, and the dew point. And you can see it for both the departing airport, but also for the, uh, I would say, arrival, right? So on Blagnac. Uh, that's one thing which has changed. So obviously, I think I'm pretty happy with this already. So besides that, you can go to the, the different pages. And you can do that by uh, using the uh, menu on the uh, left side or right side, sorry. You can easily go to the uh, checklist, right? So for example, if I want to go to the cockpit, uh, preparation i'm going to this page and what you see now is that they also made this i would say interactive so you can simply say okay hey i removed the pins the fuel quantity is checked right you can even i would say populate or maybe that will be done in the future uh this is currently not possible i thought it was possible click on this but it's currently not possible uh you can check the seat belts the aders and you can check the hb uh or three the bar ref for both items right uh then you can mark the checklist as completed and you see that this one nicely is being marked as green and then you can continue to all the checklists so nice things which have been added i would say pretty useful because you can also keep track of hey what are the things which i checked and what are the things which i still need to check and there's also a way to reset all the checklists by pressing the reset all button or by or resetting one specific checklist let's say i want to reset this one I simply reset it back to the default. If you want to go back, you simply press the fly by wire icon that will bring you back to the main page. So if we go to the dispatch, there we see that the information has been, I would say, already loaded from uh, SimBrief, right? That's the uh, OFP, but you can also go to the overview. The overview uh, was, I would say, the previous uh, default page which you saw right which shows you the model uh, the range the MMO the MRW uh, or MRW the MTOW 
the maximum zero fuel weight, right? This is another one which you need for programming the FMC, but also the maximum fuel capacity, the passengers and the cargo. So this is the overview. This is the online uh, flight plan, which contains a flight plan, which of course is being, uh, I would say, uh, imported from SimBrief. And you can easily zoom into it, right? If you want to see it from a closer view, you can go to it. And then when pressing the mouse, you can go scroll to the list and go to all the items. So really cool to see that. Then we've got the ground and the ground has also received a massive update. So first of all, there are the options to, I would say, call the power truck, for example, or call the baggage truck, call the jet bridge, uh, open the doors, open the fuel or call the fuel truck, open the doors on the back and call the catering truck, right? So let me assume that I want to, uh, let's say, uh, Call the fuel truck. I simply press this option. You can see that it's being marked as green currently. And when we go outside the aircraft, you will see that the, I would say, requested cars are now being parked closely to the aircraft, right? So I can see the power truck has been uh, parked here. So it's now connected to the power and probably for the fuel truck, we need to wait a while because that sometimes uh, takes a little bit longer as uh, you might hope for. Uh, I'm wondering if the jet bridge also will call the stairs because there's no option to call the stairs. So let's try it. Let's call the, the jet bridge. Yep. That one calls the stairs. So even though it's called a uh, jet bridge, it will also call the stairs as you can see. So really cool to see. The other thing which is part of it, and that's already, I would say, part of the official delivery also are these uh, pylons, which you see here, and also the, uh, I would say, blocks. Uh, which are close to the wheels to prevent that the aircraft will start uh, let's say moving forward or backward and th those can also be easily removed by pressing the options here right the wheel cocks and the uh, safety cones this is the service tab but you can also go to the pushback and the pushback functionality which is also available using the uh, pushback tool bar is now also integrated in simbrief so you can simply say okay hey uh, let me center on the map and then zoom out a bit and that will show you how you can uh, say move your aircraft uh, so i can switch on the uh, pushback system right by simply calling it here and then moving it uh, using the buttons shown here might be a little bit hard to see uh, you can also modify the uh, tuck direction and the tuck speed uh, there's no, I would say, way to pre-program the flight or pre-program the uh, pushback. So if you, for example, can be pushed back and then be turned to the left, right? That's part of the uh, pushback uh, toolbar. Uh, yeah, the pushback toolbar. <laughs> uh, but that's not applicable or available yet. But maybe it will be there in the future. Then, as last item, we've got, of course, the fuel. And this allows us to refuel the aircraft and you can do it using multiple ways right you can say review ready to start they can press the play option play option which will i'd say uh review the aircraft and in this case will be done instant which means that you don't have to wait but you can also set it to real or to fast depending on the top on the option you select right if i want to review currently it will take me 12 minutes if i want to do the fast way it will be two minutes so Depending on what you want, you can, I'd say, define the current uh, options which you like. The other option which is available now is fill the block view from SimBrief. Previously, you needed to populate it manually, but now you can simply say, hey, please get it from SimBrief. That will allow you to uh, review the aircraft using the values which are really required for that specific flight and then simply press the play button which will make sure that the aircraft is being refueled. Uh, let's see if the refuel truck already has arrived. Uh, I don't think so. So that will be cool if it can refuel. Oh, there it is. So the refuel truck has just arrived. So it will now start refilling or refueling the truck or the fly, uh, the, the re, so <laughs> let, me, let me start from scratch. The refuel truck will now start refilling the, uh, the aircraft uh, so that we have enough fuel to let's say depart so all kind of cool things are already here but we're not there yet there's more so first of all there's the uh, performance indicator and the performance indicator can be uh, synced or you can specify uh, a manual altitude in this case i'm a uh, what is it what is it 80 or 20 between or no 10 <laughs> zero okay cool it looks like it's uh, modifying itself 
Uh, so keep that in mind, right? You need to set the core barometer pressure and then press the uh, sync option. Uh, as you can see, uh, currently the uh, aircraft is being refilled. So it's being displayed now. So make sure that you select the correct view here uh, because it might be that it's not enough. So please validate it prior to, I'll say, closing this one. Uh, again, the altitude can be either uh, typed in manually uh, or being synced, I would recommend you to sync the option because then it will get the information from uh, Flight Simulator. And also that's of, uh, the case in the uh, ground speed. So you can either specify it manually or uh, hopefully also getting it via the uh, speed from the simulator itself. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, this, or this was the top of descent, right? You also have it for the landing, and the landing has also changed. Previously, you needed to manually populate the ICAO code from the aircraft or from the from your flight tree. And now you can also import it. Make sure that you're selecting the correct uh, type of whether you would like to see OFP, it's, uh, it's MIRA, right? Or the OFP format, and uh, that's up to you. So based on that, simply select the fill from uh, data, and then it will ensure that it will populate the flight plan. Uh, the other values like the uh, runway slope, the runway LDA, and the runway heading, and of course the elevation, those values need to be uh, still, um, let's say, manually populated. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, unfortunately, there's no option to uh, say, automatically populate them, although I think technically it might be able, or it might be possible to do it. But currently it's not possible. So although it's populating values, say partially automatically you still need to for example specify the length of the runway uh, the approach knots of course the runway slope and also it was the condition right is the condition dry is medium poor uh, what's the heading of the runway and what's the elevation of the runway um, in most cases you can get all the information from the um Nav, uh, navigraph data or you can find i would say for party uh, free source which will have that value or that data for you. That's for the performance part. Next part is we can go to the Navigraph charts. Navigraph, as the name already says, you need Navigraph subscription for it. Uh, so you can uh, select them, then you can specify the ICAO code uh, from. If you press from, it will select all the uh, information which is available from the airport. And if you press two, it will automatically populate the content from the uh, destination airport. So let's assume that we want to go to the uh, taxi map. We can uh, go to it, right? You can go to all the documents, which you see here. Uh, if there are more documents, you need to scroll down because in some cases you might want to see the maps, for example. If this is the map you want to, I would say, pin, then you can press the pin option, which will automatically pin it here. And uh, based on that, you can also, let's say, edit it, right? So you can simply remove the pins if you want. But the good thing is that if you go to the start page and go to the pin chart section, you will now also have, I would say, direct access to that map. It will bring you to this one, and then you can start, I would say, pinning around. If you want to delete it, right, you can simply uh, delete it uh, using this option and then you can start from scratch. So I'd say nice thing. Okay, critical error. So <laughs> now we need to restart it. Uh, that sometimes happens, right? If you're, I would say, using a developer edition of the aircraft or of the aircraft, yes. Uh, so let's reboot the um, flight pad and let's pull in all the information again, right? Import from SimBrief, that's done. And we we're looking at this piece, right? So we can uh, say pull the uh, standard terminal approach routes, the approaches, the taxi, the uh, stand intervention departure and references, uh, both for, I'd say, departing and arriving airports, uh, but you need to have a Navigraph subscription for it. Going to the ATC, that's only applicable if you're using uh, AVAO or VETSIM, right? When you select that as the uh, ATC and ATC sources, and that can be done in the settings menu, which we'll re we will review in a few seconds. And uh, we've got the failures. And this one is also, let's say, new. It has a few uh, options. You can either go to comfort or you can go to uh, compact, right? So the compact simply shows the, uh, let's say, failures, only the titles, and the comfort will show you a little bit more information. And you can generate issues uh, while you're flying. Uh, currently, this is the list of items. Uh, 
again it said her full simulation of the failures uh, below isn't yet guaranteed because it's currently in development but it's cool that they added this this stuff already to the uh, developer edition then of course we've got a checklist but those are the ones which we also accessed via the main menu so nothing new here going to the uh, settings menu you will find a lot of information for example we can uh, specify the thrust reduction height uh, the acceleration height and the engine out acceleration heat well, currently it's all set to 1500 also you can set the isis uh, bower unit the metric altitude and uh, the pack sign right uh, no uh, no the uh, smoking or no portable device the rmp vhf uh, spacing and of course also the uh, weight unit. Uh, if you want to change it to a different format, you can simply change it here. Uh, that's one of the items. And I think more items have been added here uh, while looking at it. Then you've got the sim options and they are a pretty default. I don't think much has changed here. Um, there's the external MCDU port, right? Which allows you to connect to the MCDU via, for example, a tablet. Uh, you can uh, use the calculated ILS uh, signals and the dynamic registration decal. Th those options are switched uh, to off by default. However, however, both the wheel cones and safety cones, or the wheel chocks and the safety uh, cones are, say, uh, on by default. Going to the other options, let's see if there are some other things. Um, these are, I would say, almost pretty the same. So the out of field checklist has been switched off by default and the MCDU keyboard input also, which makes it more realistic. Then we've got the audio, also not so much changes here. I think it's all pretty realistic. Some new audio, but that was already part of the uh, previous uh, developer edition. And then we've got the flypad. So the flypad has now multiple options, multiple languages which you can configure. Uh, so there are, I would say, a lot of additional languages so if you want to change to a different one uh select them from the list it looks like that this is i would say feature which still needs to be populated uh, and then we've got the on-screen uh oh there it is and then we've got the on-screen uh keyboard layout which can also be in different languages um other than that i don't see that much here besides i would say simulating the battery usage uh and that's an interesting thing because if the ipad crashes and resets it's going back to the normal level then the time being displayed you can set it either to utc and uh local or you can set it to both right then you see it like this uh, this is a nice option and you can change the uh say mode of the uh fly pad blue dark and uh light whatever you prefer about well of course it contains the information about the flypad os so flypad os uh, number three already uh is built on this uh i would say this version of flight simulator and it's currently in development so do expect or if you don't want to i would say expect any issues then i uh, don't use it uh, but if you're interested in some new functionality yet then you might want to use it so in this video we looked at the multiple items which are new to the flypad os and specifically at uh, how to use them uh, here ends this video i hope you liked it if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you've got questions or comments then feel free to put them in the comment box below and if you want to stay up to date about new videos i'm posting then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time